Now we're going to turn to understanding this process of development. Again, this is really, really complicated to understand in detail. So we have just kind of a lot of big picture understanding at this level. But the key question here is, you know, how is it that we go from this initial kind of jello-like uh, construction of the brain in particular to genius? And, you know, everybody at some level of, of reference is a genius. You know, if you think about all the things that you can do, and especially even compared to people from, you know, 100 years ago, especially 1,000 or 10,000 years ago, you know, your abilities are just amazing, okay? Even if you're kind of average relative to your peers, it's still amazing. Even with all the advances in AI that we're seeing, uh, there's still so many things that, that any average person can do that way outpace what can be done with these kind of AI techniques. And yet, we all start out essentially as idiots. Uh, there's this great onion headline, you know, it says babies are complete idiots and <laughs> outlines all the ways in which babies really can't do much. And yeah, if you've had uh, been around babies, you've had babies, um, you can really see that, you know, we do start out really basic, okay? And uh, it's just astounding how this whole process works. And obviously, you know, from the very start of the development, we start out as this single cell, right? And it's just mind bending, right? Uh, the single cell turns into you. I mean, it's just inconceivable. We're going to try to understand a little bit about this process sort of at a descriptive level. You know, what does it actually look like? And then again, trying to understand a little bit more about the underlying mechanisms. What are the processes that shape this developmental process? Um, and then we'll think about um, these kinds of forces in the environment, uh, the social, parental, genetic influences, and how those play out in the course of development. So first of all, you know, it's just it's just astounding to look at, at the developmental process. These videos here are time lapse videos going from, you know, birth to like two years old with these kind of morphing snapshots between these different steps. And you just get to see again in a compressed time that you can kind of really perceptually see the the whole unfolding of this developmental process. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why we're so fascinated with butterflies is that in effect, we are all like these butterflies. We start out as these little kind of cocoons and then we flower into these amazing, you know, adult forms. Uh, and, and that process is the process of development. And again, seeing it kind of compressed in time really gives you a, a palpable sense. So again, these links will be in the about information on the video, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do start out with a lot of uh, challenging uh, developmental aspects to our intelligence. Um, and so uh, my wife is a developmental psychologist. And so she has done these studies looking at some of these early signatures of cognitive function in, in kids and babies. And so we happen to have videos of uh, our kids doing these tests, which you can watch uh, on YouTube. Again, these links will be in the information. Um, and when you see this, you see the first one is uh, about this, this test called the A not B task. And so kids are basically reaching for one location and then a, the toy that they're reaching for is hidden in a new location, the B location. Guess what, guess what Kai does? He reaches back for the original A location. And this is uh, something that uh, Piaget first observed and documented as the A not B error. It's very reliable. Uh, and it just shows that, that kids have a hard time updating and they tend to perseverate. And then a few years later, the same kind of phenomenon is still playing out. So even when kids are able to pass these tests of A not B, uh, with this basic kind of hiding location. Now, when they have to switch more abstract rules for sorting cards in, the, in this card sorting task, uh, they still exhibit these kinds of perseveration. And we think these are reflecting in part a contribution of the development of the prefrontal cortex, but it really gives you, development really gives you this window into uh, what's developing, uh, how cognition exists kind of in its more quote unquote primitive steps and, and then how these different major kind of components of cognition emerge over time that gives you a real deep understanding about the nature of these different cognitive elements in the first place. And so development is really a great way 
to understand cognition and other aspects of behavior because uh, you can kind of see these sort of simpler systems and how they're changing over time. What develops and when does it develop? That kind of documenting the, the whole process of development from a cognitive and social kind of level is uh, what we're going to talk about next. Um, and you can kind of sort of intuitively understand what this process looks like when you think about, you know, well, we start off, we can't do anything, we can't walk, we can't talk, we can't, you know, we can't do anything. Um, and so, you know, all that stuff has to emerge. The very early steps are these basic kind of sensory motor abilities, crawling, reaching, grasping, uh, then, you know, kind of getting more of an understanding of our world and a huge aspect of development early on around the age of two is this kind of language, this ability to understand that objects have names. You can then start naming things. So uh, that whole cognitive conceptual development of essentially this kind of compression process, learning how to abstract and categorize the world into things that matter. Uh, and then control is really this process of this sensory motor uh, development where you are now able to control your own behavior, able to control the environment. All these kinds of steps are really this early process up to about age two or three uh, that really get the kind of foundation of all the elements that we need to kind of function in the real physical world. And then after that point, a lot of development then focuses, you know, obviously on continued development of those cognitive systems, but now the social elements start to get more and more important. Uh, and we eventually end up developing, you know, our sense of identity in adolescence, et cetera. So you can kind of, you know, think about uh, just sort of intuitively what we know about the, the overall behavior of kids at different ages, et cetera. And that gives you a pretty good sense of, uh, of this process. So, you know, one of the striking things about people is that we are born so helpless. That's very different from many animals, which have a very advanced stage of development, different levels of pre precociousness of animals. Uh, it's really striking. And one idea is that, you know, what, what really characterizes humans successful kind of niche in the world is our ability to adapt flexibly to very different kinds of environments and new things that happen. And that depends fundamentally on learning. And so the reason we're born so kind of, you know, uh, inept is that we have to learn everything from the ground up. But having learned everything from the ground up, we learn a much more sophisticated and flexible set of cognitive uh, functions that can adapt to different kinds of situations. So this kind of idea that uh, this neotenism, this increased level of infantilism and the, the uh, extended period of our, our development makes us ultimately more capable and more flexible. Uh, and, and that's kind of the human gambit, evolutionarily speaking.